Hello and welcome to Lower Marion Libraries Online. On this show, we bring you some of the fun and educational programs offered by our six libraries. All Lower Marion Libraries are open for in-person visitation, but some restrictions still apply. Please visit lmls.org for hours and services. As always, though, our staff and librarians bring you a variety of fun and informative online programs for your viewing pleasure. This is in addition to some great resources offered by our libraries, like ebooks. Visit lmls.org and click on the Find eBooks link on the left side of the page. There you'll find links to Overdrive and Hoopla, among many others, and a huge variety of eBooks for your reading pleasure. But for now, it's on to the videos. Join Ms. Gwen from Belmont Hills Library for a back to school craft. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the craft portion of the Boohoo Back to School program. So, so we are doing this craft, and it's going to be based on the idea of a Hamza. And a Hamza is traditionally found in Middle East and Middle Eastern countries. And it's supposed to be a talisman to promote good luck or like a good luck charm. And it's usually in the shape of a hand with the eye, which you've probably seen like that right there. But in this case, because this is to promote good luck for the coming school year, we cut it out in the shape of a book. And then what you're going to do is we're going to cover it with the foil and we're going to carve, not really carve, but inscribe into the foil. Um, you can use words or shapes or curly cues or anything you want that you think will bring you good luck for the school year. So you're going to take your foil and we gave you two sheets because in case you use one and it's not what you really want to do, you can take it off and do another one. Okay. Or you can cut another shape if you have some foam board lying around you can cut your own shape and you can make another one so we're going to take the shiny part face down put your shape on top of it so it looks like this okay. and then you're just going to gently fold over the edges and the other thing you can do is you can also put it down like this and you can gently trace it and cut it out and use a glue stick and glue it on. Okay, so but for now I'm just going to turn over. And then you see that there are curves here. So I'm just going to gently turn it over and then push it down into the curves. I'm going to do the same with this side. There's a little curve there. Push it down. That's the nice thing about foil. It's very malleable. Okay. And then if it's just shifting a little bit, you can certainly tape the back like I'm going to do. Now what you can do is you can use your toothpick or you can use a, a slightly unsharpened pencil if you want and you can draw pictures or designs, patterns, words. So on one side I'm going to put a peace sign because I want the school year to be peaceful for everybody and on the other side I'm going to put a heart. So that everybody's kind to each other. You can kind of see it there. And then you can also use, um, so you can leave it like that. You can you can just leave like the the shapes um, that you've put in there, the in, inscribing that you've done. Or you can add some color to it with um, a Sharpies work really well if you have them at home. So I'm gonna do my heart in a red Sharpie you can see that the Sharpie adheres really well to the foil. You can probably use regular markers too. Then I'm going to use purple. And I'm going to put 
little lines around my heart to show that it's a beating happy heart. So you can see there, see the little purple lines? And then I'm going to get like a magenta color. And I'm just going to loosely color it in. And then for my peace sign, I have some uh, glow-in-the-dark dimensional fabric paint. You can use regular paint or markers. I just thought this would be fun to try, whatever you have lying around. And also, if you have other embellishments, you know, like um, mica flakes or buttons or beads. Not really big beads, though, because they might fall off. Small beads, sequins things like that. You can also glue them on. There's that. And then I'm going to, across the top, I'm going to write 2021, because that's this year. And when we get back from the winter break, which will be in a few months, believe it or not, it will be 2022. So I'm going to write that on this side. I'm going to write 2021 and 2022. And then I thought I would take the white paint, and you can use glue too, and I'm going to go over it. Do 20, 21. Or if you're good writing with the paint, you don't even have to write it with the pencil first. It does come out really fast whether it's glue or paint, so you gotta be a little careful there. And if you're writing something, it might kind of merge into each other, but that's okay. Can you kind of see how it's 2021, 2022? And then I thought what I would do is to add a little sparkle. I'm gonna use my mica flakes. Oops, but first I'm going to get my paper plate so it doesn't get all over. I'm just going to gently Put some over top. Put my lid back on. And I'm going to just. And there. Oh, look at that. It's all sparkly. I could have done it in a different color, but I thought it would look cool, the silver on silver. So I hope you've enjoyed making this. Please take a picture of it or you with it if you want, and we will post it to our um, to the library's Facebook page. Email it to me at ggatto at lmls.org. And I am looking forward to seeing the beautiful creations that you've made. And have a great year this year at school. And please come in and visit us at the library. Bye. You can find this complete video and lots of other videos on the Library System's YouTube channel. Just visit lmls.org and click on the Programs on YouTube button. Well, we have to take a break, but stay tuned. There's lots more to come here on Lower Marion Libraries Online. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Lower Marion Libraries Online, where we feature some great virtual programs offered at our six Lower Marion Libraries. Although Library Card Sign-Up Month has concluded, it's still a great time to get your Lower Marion Library card. Just bring your photo ID to your local library or visit lmls.org and sign up today to access an endless variety of content. Now back to the videos. Just in time for fall, join Miss Jackie from Ludington Library and make a fun craft, apple frames. Hey everybody, it's Miss Jackie and Miss Casey from the Ludington Library Junior Room and we are here to do a craft with you today. Today we are going to make apple cores that also function as a photo frame for your little school picture for grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, mom and dad. It's a nice gift. So what you need, tongue depressors, about four of them. That should do it. You need glue dots. You need 
felt or construction paper and markers, black markers and scissors. And you're gonna need red or green felt or construction paper. You're gonna need brown construction paper or felt to make these. And glue dots. And glue dots, I said glue dots. Oh, yeah. sorry. That's okay. All right, so we are going to make this. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we also have, um, you also need little popsicle sticks. So you need the big tongue depressors and two popsicle sticks to make the craft. Okay? All right, so first things first. You're going to take your four tongue depressors. You're going to lay them flat next to each other and make them even. Okay. That looks good. You're then going to get your felt or your construction paper. You can make your apples red. You can make your apples green. Whatever you want is fine, but you're going to make the leaves green. So keep that in mind. And you're going to make the stem brown. And you have to make your apple either red or, or green or yellow like apples are. And we're going to cut out the top of the apple, which is like a half circle and the bottom of the apple, which is another half circle, right? So you might want to fold your felt or your construction paper in half to make your two sides even. And you're just going to cut a half of the circle. And you're going to cut along the fold, all right? Well, don't cut along the fold. No, I mean you're going to cut up from the fold around, yeah. is what I mean. So that when you cut it, the open part is on the top, okay, and you're going to cut from the bottom, a half circle. So when it comes out, it's going to look like this, and then you're going to cut it in half. Okay, there you go. So this is going to be the top of your apple, and this is going to be the bottom of your apple. And the sticks are going to be the apple core in the middle, okay? Like after you eat an apple, the seed part is the apple core, okay? So you get your glue dots. Man, they're too small. Yeah, you gotta make them pretty big because they have to cover all four sticks. So you wanna make them pretty wide, at least four sticks wide, okay? You get your glue, your glue dots and you're gonna put two glue dots on the top of the sticks and two glue dots on the bottom of the sticks, but you're gonna put them in between the first and second sticks like this. So you're gonna put one here and one here so that it holds the sticks together a little bit, okay? And then you're gonna do that on the other side to hold the other two sticks together. And I'll show you what I mean after I do it here. I'm gonna put them closer to the top, but you're gonna connect these two and these two with a glue dot. So these are the four sticks. You're gonna connect these two and these two up top and at the bottom with a glue dot. Okay. And that's gonna hold your sticks a little together. Glue dots are a wonderful invention. They make crafting so much easier. All right. And then you're gonna stick the top of your apple over the glue dots, but you're gonna leave it at the top. Here are your sticks. You're gonna put it over your sticks, but you're gonna have it be above the sticks. I'll show you. See how this is? So it's above the sticks a little bit, but over the sticks on the other side, okay? So you're gonna put a glue dot here to hold these two sticks together, a glue dot here to hold these two sticks together, a glue dot here to hold these two sticks together, and a glue dot here to hold these two sticks together. All right, and then when you do it, your glue dots are on this side. You're gonna put your top of your apple and the bottom of your apple over the glue dots. That's the top and the bottom of your apple. All right. Just like that okay and then this is the back all right on the back 
you want to take your popsicle sticks and you want to cut them to just be the length of all four sticks. Can you have the scissors, please? Thank so, you. So you're just going to cut them the length of the four sticks. You don't want any overhang. Now be careful and ask for help with scissors if you need help. You're going to put glue dots to hold these sticks across the back of your apple on the four um, tongue depressors. All right. So your top of your apples, top of your apples on this side, the bottom of your apples on this side, right? And then you flip it over and you're gonna put a popsicle stick across the four sticks with glue dots, okay? And it's gonna hold your sticks together better because this is gonna be a, a frame for a school picture, or a fun picture. You can use any picture you want. There you go. This is Casey in seventh grade. Love it. And I'm going to glue dot it on the back of my frame. And here you go. It's a great gift to give somebody you love in your family. Mm -hmm. Right? And you don't need an occasion to give a gift. Mm -mm. You can give a gift at any time. And this apple gift is it's packed with surprises. Look, surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a fun craft to do. We want to thank you for joining us. Let us see your apple crafts. If you create some, take a picture, put it in the comments below, and let us see what you did. I'm sure everybody's apples. Your apple has oh, a heart. My apples have seeds on both sides. Oh, you can have seeds on both sides. That's fine. Yes. Um, show us your, your apple craft in the comments below. We would love to see them. We'll see you soon at the Lettington Library. We're now open full our full hours. Mm -hmm. Check them out on the lmls.org website. We'll see you soon in the Lettington Library Junior Room. Bye. Once again, you can view this entire video and all the other great videos on the Library System's YouTube channel. Just click on the Programs on YouTube button on lmls.org. And be sure to follow the Library System's other social media sites on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Well, we have to take another break, but please stay tuned. There's more great virtual library programming to come. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Lower Marion Libraries Online, where we share some of the best informational online programs our librarians have developed just for you. Lower Marion Libraries are open for in-person visitation, but some restrictions remain. Please visit our website for all the details. Well, here's our last video for this month. We continue our fall apple theme with Try It Out with Miss Melody and 3D Apple. Have fun. Hey everyone, it's Miss Melody from the Lettington Library Junior Room. Welcome back to Try It Out with Miss Melody. Fall is not here yet, but it is coming very soon. And I know a lot of people get super excited about pumpkins in the fall, but one of my favorite things about fall is the apples. So today we are going to be doing a paper craft with some apples. We're going to be making our own paper apples. This is a great craft for anyone, but it is especially good for toddlers, older toddlers, and preschoolers who are just starting to work on their scissor skills. We're gonna be doing some good work with our scissors today and also a hole punch that can help work on fine motor skills. Here are the supplies that you're gonna need. You're gonna need some different colors of construction paper. I'm using green and red and brown for my apple. You can also use yellow or green or even orange if you want yours to look a little bit more like a pumpkin. You're also going to need a hole punch, some scissors, something to write with, some tape, a ruler, and some brass paper fasteners, which are also called brads. And if you don't have brads, you can also use a stapler, but it's not gonna work quite the same way. So we are gonna start by cutting the strips of paper to make our apples. So you're gonna pick whatever color you want your apple to be, and we're gonna put it horizontally, so lengthwise. 
The strips we're making are gonna be the shorter way when we cut it, not long ways. You're gonna want to make your strips about two inches wide. They do not have to be perfect, but that's why I got our ruler, so you can kind of make straight lines. If you're doing this with a toddler, you're gonna to want to measure out those lines for them and draw either um, dotted lines or straight lines for them to cut on. Once we have drawn those lines, we're gonna go ahead and cut them out. So we're gonna cut along these lines to make six strips of our colored paper. Once you've cut your paper into six short strips, now we're ready to use our hole punch. You're gonna take your hole punch and punch one hole right in the middle of both ends of your strip. So one on that end and one on that end. So there's one on each side and you're gonna do that for each of your strips. Next, you're ready to draw your leaves and to cut at a stem if you would like. So I already pre-drew some leaves. You can, these can look however you'd like. You can allow your toddler to draw them how they would like to draw them or you can help them by drawing a little template for them to cut out. And then you're going to take some brown paper and cut out a rectangle for the stem. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Once I've cut out both my leaves and my stem, I'm gonna fold my leaves in half to make them look a little more leafy, a little more realistic. And then I'm going to hole punch one hole in each of the leaves as well. I'm not going to punch a hole in my stem though. Leave that alone. So one hole in each of my leaves. I don't know if you can see that. Now I'm ready to assemble my apple. I'm gonna do that by laying out my strips in kind of like a star pattern so that the holes overlap. So this looks like there's one hole in the middle. You can see all the way down through the table. Put one there, one here, and I'm gonna make sure their holes are overlapping so I can see down to the table. Put one here, one here, so kind of like an X to start with. And then the last two pieces are gonna go diagonally, still lining up the holes. I'm gonna take a brad. I managed to buy brads that are huge. These are enormous. You do not need to have ones that are quite this big. They do sell them in a smaller size. So I'm gonna, with the help of a parent, you're gonna want to lift these up and you're gonna stick the long end of the brad right through there. And we're gonna spread out the edges here so that those pieces will not fall apart. They're kind of like a big snowflake looking thing. Now we're gonna wrap up the pieces of paper to make a sphere so it will look like an apple. So I'm gonna need a second brad. I'm gonna take each of my pieces here and once again, I'm gonna line them up so I can see through the circle in the middle. Once you have them all on top of each other and you can see through that circle, you're gonna take the brad and you're gonna poke it up through the middle. So instead of poking it down so the flat side is on top, you're gonna actually poke, poke it up so that the long parts are sticking out of the top like that. Now I'm ready to add my leaves. So I'm also gonna stick those through the hole. I'm gonna add two leaves to mine. put one side of the brad down. That's gonna help keep this in place. And the other side I'm gonna leave up because that is where I'm gonna attach my stem. So I have a paper stem, it's brown, and I'm gonna get a little tape. I'm just gonna tape it right here on the front. Maybe trim it just a little bit. have an apple and you see it has leaves and a stem and it's nice and 3D so you can set it out on your counter somewhere. It's a great fall decoration and also a really great practice at cutting. Before you go, I have some book recommendations and these are all going to be about apples. So these are all apple books. And all of them are also gonna have a little bit of information in them. So even though um, two of the three of them are made up stories, they are gonna have some apple facts in them as well. 
So the first book I have for you today is called The Apple Pie Tree. This is by Zoe Hall. And this follows two little girls who are watching their apple tree all through the season. So they see um, the blooms come out in spring. They watch it in winter time when the, the um, leaves are gone and the snow is falling. And it ends in fall when the girls are able to pick some apples and make an apple pie from those apples from their tree. The next book I have for you is totally nonfiction. It's a nonfiction book called Apple Harvest. This book is by Kelvin Harris, and it has a lot of really good facts about fall and about apples and about things we do with apples, but it's a nice short book. So this is good for toddlers and preschoolers that have a little bit of a shorter attention span, the shorter sentences and not quite as much information as other apple books might. The last book I have for you today is called From Apple Trees to Cider, Please. And this follows a family who's going to an apple orchard and some of the things that they see there, and then they get to watch some apple cider being made. So they see it getting pressed and all the steps to making apple cider. It also has some facts in the back. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoy this craft. If you make it, I would love to see them. So if you'd like to post some pictures in the comments of the apples you've made, we really enjoy seeing the crafts you've made here in the junior room, and we hope to see you soon. You can find this video on the Library System's YouTube channel. Click on the Programs on YouTube button on lmls.org. Well, we're out of time for this episode, but please tune in again next month for more of the best online programs from our six Lower Marion libraries. You can visit lmls.org anytime for more information, including a weekly schedule of programs, story times, and a whole suite of apps and websites with links to a huge variety of content. If you have any questions about what services are available or any other specific requests, you can always call your local library at the numbers listed on the screen. Thanks again for watching Lower Marion Libraries Online. We'll see you next time.